Hey everybody, welcome to the post Memorial Day edition of No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQCW. And as always, no DQ.com. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right down to your questions. Hey Aaron, do you think WWE might take Santino Morella more seriously and put a world title on him? I think he is good on the mic and he is a good wrestler. He is funny and he had a great debut, so why does WWE keep on making him a joke? A joke? I don't think he's a joke. I mean, like you said, he's good on the mic. He's actually great on the mic. He was on the top 25 talkers of all time list on WWE.com. According to WWE, he's a better talker than Shawn Michaels. He's a better talker than Jim Cornette. So how are you saying they're making him a joke? But no, um, seriously, the deal with Santino Morella is that obviously WWE is very high on him. He has always been a regular member of the roster, and he's always been on television on a regular basis. Um, the thing is, I think they see him as a solid mid-card comedy act and nothing more. That's what they want to do with him. They want to have him go out there and just be funny and uh, do his shtick, and that's it. They don't want to do anything else with him. That That's his role on TV. Um, I suppose if you took him more seriously in WWE and you pushed him harder... Maybe he could uh, get to that next level. Who knows? I mean, Santino's definitely a talented guy. He's a good wrestler, good on the mic. Wouldn't say he's top 25 quality on the mic, but he's a, he's a good performer all around. And uh, the thing is, for me personally, I think his character has gotten stale in terms of the comedy and all that. I mean, uh, when he first came in, I thought he was hilarious, and I loved all the segments he did with Steve Austin. And once they turned him face, I thought that really watered the character down. If it was me, I would have I would have uh, taken him in, in a different direction back in 2009, 2010. And at this point, I think that it would be hard to try to push him in a more serious manner now because he's been that comedy character for so long. And I, I just think the audience would have a hard time uh, believing in him as a, as a serious character. I, so I, I just don't see it happening. Hey, Aaron, longtime reader, first time asker. With the reports of Ric Flair being finished with TNA, how would you feel about him coming back to WWE as a co-GM? Sort of the sort of the same thing as Bischoff and Stone Cold. The problem with that is I don't think at this stage of the game Ric Flair should be a focal point on WWE television. I think if he comes back, it should be in a limited capacity, like a Legends role. Have him have him appear on TV every once in a while. The thing is, if Flair's on TV regularly. He, let's face it, he's Ric Flair. He's going to go out there and uh, he's going to be Ric Flair and he's going to steal the show. Um, nobody can really touch Ric Flair on the mic. So it, it, it's counterproductive when you're trying to build up new talent. And uh, I, I mean, one could say, you know, Ric Flair is more talented than these other guys and he should be on TV. But at the same time, you're, you're trying to build new talent and uh, having Ric Flair out there all the time uh, will not help matters. So if it was me, I would... Uh, Limit him to maybe appearing on TV every now and then, like a Roddy Piper type role. Uh, have him in the video games. Have him make the, the personal appearances. Uh, do more DVD projects with him. But um, I would not have him in any kind of uh, co-GM role. Is it cynical of me to think the suspension of Chris Jericho is well-timed? Considering during his suspension, he will be going to Europe for a few shows with Fozzie. All right, let's get this out of the way right now. Chris Jericho being suspended was not some sort of uh, storyline by WWE, some sort of way for them to write him off television so he could tour with Fozzie. This was just a bad situation. Chris Jericho came into Brazil and he did what has been done so many times in the past. Desecrating a uh, foreign country's flag to get heel heat is, uh, is something that's been done many, many times. And I think Chris Jericho just didn't know what the laws were like in Brazil and... Uh, he didn't know what the consequences would be. And WWE had to do uh, damage control, so they suspended Chris Jericho. And uh, I think that when his suspension is up, he'll be back. He'll, he'll be back on television, and uh, he'll be around for the summer, and then he'll, he'll take his time off to do his tour with Fozzie, and then uh, he'll come back after that. The thing about Chris Jericho, um, and I think this is uh, brilliant on his part, is that he wants you to... Uh, Keep guessing. He doesn't want you to know what's going to happen next. So he goes on Twitter and uh, he keeps teasing that he's done. And uh, he does things to throw people off. And uh, it's just Chris Jericho being Chris Jericho. So um, don't read too much into it. I, um, like I said, I think that it, um, when the suspension is up, he'll be back. 
He'll take his time off the tour, then he'll come back again. Just expect that to happen. And uh, don't read too much into what he says on Twitter. Do you think there will be a ladder match on Raw again? I always found ladder matches um, like those on a non-pay-per-view night to be exciting. I don't think it's going to happen that often. You might see a ladder match every now and then. The thing is, you don't want to give away too much on free TV. And uh, back during the Attitude Era, during the Monday Night Wars era, um, Raw and Nitro would try to one-up each other, and you would see ladder matches all the time. You'd see cage matches all the time. And uh, back then, I mean, wrestling was so hot, you could you could um, hot shot stuff like that and, and give away all these big matches on free TV. But it's a different era now, and... Um, WWE really needs to try to save these matches for the pay-per-views and uh, make people pay for it. And uh, part of the problem, too, is uh, having the right storyline. Obviously, if you just throw out a ladder match for no reason, like Money in the Bank, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. I mean, you have to have some sort of storyline build-up for it to mean something. Now, on that note, if you want to do a storyline and then have a ladder match on Raw... You know, I'm fine with it once in a while as long as there's some sort of good reason to have a ladder match. If you're just doing it for no reason, then um, I think that waters it down more than anything else. Hey Aaron, love the show. Keep it up. Thank you for that. After what happened on Raw, do you think Dolph Ziggler will break away from Vicky and Swagger and turn face? Well, after that match, uh, the tag team match, I, I definitely uh, was thinking that. That this is it. They're going to split... Dolph Ziggler away from Vicky Guerrero, which, if you've been following the show here on No dq &A video, I have been uh, talking about how I think that Dolph Ziggler needs to break away from Vicky and that he's strong enough on his own on the mic that um, he could he could go to the next level. They just need to uh, let him do his own thing. But um, then then towards the end of the show, they they showed uh, Vicky and Dolph backstage uh, talking about facing Orton. So. Um, I, I guess, at least for the time being, uh, Dolph's still going to be with Vicky, but at least they're going to um, split Ziggler and Swagger, which is one step in the right direction. But um, if it was me, I would uh, I would not turn him face right now. I think with the whole hashtag heel and the show off and all that, I think he's doing great in that role, and um, he should keep building building that character up. So um, what I like to see is him and Vicky break up. I mean, keep them together for another month or two. And just uh, continue to tease a split and finally have them split. Um, but but not, not do it in a way where uh, where uh, Dolph ends up turning face. I think he should stay as a heel, uh, continue to build momentum. And then, uh, you know, you look at Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was a heel for several years. And then finally, when he got to the top, they turned him face. That's what I think they should do with Dolph Ziggler. And uh, if it happens, it remains to be seen. Alright, that'll wrap things up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash no DQ and stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the very latest in WWE and TNA. Uh, we got round two of the No DQ King of the Ring coming up. Starts this Thursday. Uh, you can vote for your favorite. Make sure you vote because in a couple of the polls we had um, some really close races. We had like 50% versus 50% for uh, one of the matches. John Cena versus Robert Roode. Bobby Roode, whatever. Um, so yeah, it was very close. Make sure you vote for your favorite. Uh, spread the word. Tell a friend on Facebook or Twitter, whatever. And uh, we'll see you next time.